Karen had been working at LA Tan for probably about a year, usually day shifts. Karen wasn't even supposed to be working that night. She was doing her a favor for the manager. I would never think that this kind of incident could happen in Orland Park. Karen was cleaning one of the beds when the door buzzed. She came to help what she thought was supposed to be a customer. The man pulled out a gun and told her to give him all the money. He had her step away from the register. And at that point, he pulled out a piece of rope and uh, forced her to tie herself up. First thing he saw was the gun, and then he saw Karen tied up. Jason tried to explain that he was a new father, he was married, that he didn't have to do this. As the gunman pulled out the lengths of rope, he dropped one on the ground. He let go of the gun and moved away from it to reach down and pick up that piece of rope. And in that moment, Jason saw his opportunity and he went for it. Jason's instructing him to stop everything that he's doing, to stop moving, reaching into his pockets. But the man didn't listen. Hello? I need help right now, please. I need police. Please hurry. Guys, a robbery in progress. One no, no, man on the store with a pistol. Describe him for me, can you? I know. I'm sorry. Can you describe him for me? I I can. Does he still have the gun? Yes, he does. Who's helping you in there? I'm sorry. Who's helping you in there? A customer. Okay, where's the gun at right now? I don't know. I can't see. I'm just calling you. Please hurry. Get out! 
How many people are in the store right now? Uh, me. The customer helping me. There's one person canning right now and, and, and the robber guy. Man, the police are out in front. I don't see them. Where are they? They're outside. Trust me, okay? There's a way that they're going to come in. Somebody shot? The robber is shot, but I need help right now, please. Yeah, we have a person shot inside that store also, you guys. The offender is down on this, you guys. The offender is down. When I do reflect back on this, some of them just didn't fit. He's wearing all black, ski neck cap, big guy, big round guy. He's older too. He had no life in his eyes. When Jason came in, I just thought, oh, thank goodness, you know, somebody's here, somebody's gonna see me. I'm not gonna die alone here. I kept asking him, I was begging him, like, hey, show me your hands or I'm gonna have to shoot you. And he kept rolling around on, like, this belt where I see all these weird tools and, you know, just, just weird stuff. So who knows what he could have had underneath there? And I didn't want to become a victim. And that's when I shot him. Police ran ballistics on the gun that Gary and Maya used and connected that gun to bullets found at four other crime scenes. This man was attacking people and killing people at random. Gary Amaya was, in fact, the honeybee killer, a man who had approached people um, in Illinois and in Northwest Indiana, mentioned something about honeybees, and then killed people. When I found out that I came face to face with a serial killer, it changed my world forever. To know that all of these odds were stacked against me, I definitely think that since I was saved that day, I have something greater to do. I, I know I'm not done yet. Heroes are for policemen and firemen. I wouldn't consider myself a hero like that. But it uh, feels good, though, you know, when people say things like that. It feels good. <laughs>